everybody maybe have a seat. What we're going to do is I'm just going to give a few, few words to start us off. And our amazing musicians today, John Wimmenhorst and Munir Hussein, uh, would like to do a special 10-minute uh, piece, especially for my dad. My dad has been a, uh, a, a classical Indian uh, music aficionado for all of his life, and uh, he's especially fond of the uh, tabla, so they wanted to do a special song for him. And uh, it'll take about 10 minutes, and then we'll get started. Uh, but it's an honor to welcome you all here this afternoon to this 80th birthday celebration of perhaps the finest man I know, Yelori Ratanraj. If God created an ideal father, one where integrity was at its core, then God, I think, broke the mold after he first became a parent in 1971. The idea of this celebration was actually birthed following a string of recent deaths, both in our community and in our family at large. Uh, most recently, Uncle Thomas Prasadarao passed away, and he was actually the one who guaranteed my mom her papers when she immigrated to this country many years ago. And then, right before the pandemic, we lost my great uh, uncle, William Mati, and that was shortly uh, after my own grandmother passed away in India. So, eulogizing people is very important when they pass away, but I think it's even more special to celebrate them while they're alive. Is that, is that fair? Yes. Yeah. So that's where we thought, we thought, you know, my dad has meant so much to us and to, to this community. Let's celebrate him now and, uh, and take this time. Because all of us in this room have suffered loss. All of us have faced grief. All of us in this room have faced strife of one sort or another, including sometimes within our own communities and even within our own families. And we need healing. From that, right? And so that's what events like this bring us all together and allow us to heal, spend time together. Um, in, in medical terms, we call these common salad groups. Uh, it's an effective tool to actually prevent burnout in our society, believe it or not, is breaking bread. And with the pandemic that's been looming all these years, we haven't had a chance to do this. So we, we wanted to just open it up and say, hey, let's, let's get back together. Because all of us in this room have strong ties that bind. If it's culturally, we're bound, fraternally, as brothers and sisters, and most importantly, spiritually, because we have been, we all have this blessed assurance that a heavenly journey is awaiting all of us, right? And that's why I thought it was very fitting to have this celebration here at Sligo Church, where my parents have been members since 1967, mm -hmm. continuously since 1967, which is a feat in itself. So Ratan Raj was born 80 years ago in a humble rice growing village of Chittavaram, West Godavari district in Andhra Pradesh, a place that first taught me an interesting term. It taught me what a gosi was. <laughs> a gosi. Uh, by, by your silence, or some of you don't know what a gosi is. Oh, you know what a gosi is. Okay. For the uninitiated, the gosi is the original thong underwear for men <laughs> and it exposes the entire buttocks region and that gave me my first taste of what culture shock was for an American kid going to India and seeing a lot of exposed skin I was uh, I was very surprised but that was where I saw it first in, in my dad's village and we think that my father was born there on June 12 1943 but the village birth and death records were all washed away in a flood. So his official birthday, as recorded on his US passport and his immigration papers, is actually January 1st. <laughs> Have any of you actually faced this kind of a situation before? Oh, uh, oh Uncle Robinson, you had that same, same situation? You have a made up birthday? <laughs> but, but that's where if we counted both birthdays, He's about 150 years old, <laughs> which would make him as old as President Biden. <laughs> so uh, there we have that. Jokes have really been a big part of his life and our lives as a family. In fact, I still often call him to share him the joke of the day that I've heard on the radio. One particular one was so good, he even asked me to write it down. He said, Preet, this was such a good joke, write it down for me. And I had him start it back and tell me about it, but in a Telugu accent, it didn't quite work so well. So I thought I would share this joke that I heard uh, that 
uh, again, he was, he was very, uh, uh, very touched by it. So there are four Catholic women who are sitting at a table after church service, and they're all, you know, just enjoying bragging about their children. And the first lady says, well, you know, my son, he is a priest. So when he walks into the church, everybody addresses him as father. Okay. Then the second lady said, well, my son, he's a bishop. So when he walks in the, in the church, everyone addresses him as your excellence. Then the third lady said, well, mine is a cardinal. So when he walks into any parish, they address him as your eminence. Then the fourth lady was sitting for a minute. She said, well, my children aren't in the, in the church, but my son, he's six foot four, he's a doctor, and he's built like a professional football player and wears impeccable suits. And whenever he walks into church, all the ladies say, oh my God. <laughs> so uh, my dad enjoyed that one. My dad enjoyed that one. I'll have a couple of more jokes as we go along. But just this past weekend, I was visiting President Gerald Ford's museum in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and several things actually resonated with me about his upbringing and the way I was raised. He had three rules in his house growing up. One, tell the truth. Two, work hard. And three, do dinner together every evening as a family. My dad was actually the epitome of these three rules. I already mentioned my father's integrity, which is something that's always stood out about him to me, especially coming from a culture where we, tell to, we tend to tell tall tales. Am I right? <laughs> or, or exaggerate the truth, right? If you ever ask another Indian for directions in India, for example, what do they say? Oh, in five minutes, five minutes. Uh, and uh, it always ends with opposite one shot. <laughs> right? So that's how directions go. Thank goodness for Google, Google Maps now that I don't get lost. But as a kid, I would spend hours and hours getting lost. So uh, my dad always taught the truth. It doesn't mean that he was always right, mind you. Uh, he's far from. But he's always been a man of his word. And I've admired that over the years about him. He's also worked really hard, sometimes to a fault. He's the only person I know with three master's degrees. Anybody here beat that? Three master's degrees. Wow. Nobody else in the room? Okay, yeah, he has one in religious education and special education, both from Howard University, and his master's in library science from the University of Maryland. Maryland. He parlayed the latter two degrees to serve as an overseas librarian for the National Institute of Blind and Handicapped at the Library of Congress. He loved to study and loved to work. Again, sometimes to a fault because he wouldn't even leave the office five minutes early to come get me or my sister and pick us up. We'd have to wait for hours because he didn't want to jip the system those extra five hours. But that's the type of honesty that he had. My dad he's, was also always home for dinner. That was very important to us growing up. He always, we always shared that evening meal together and he still does have all of his priorities right in that regard. In fact, the other thing you need to know about Ratan Raj is that it's also been a joke in our household. He has to have three meals a day. <laughs> he cannot miss a meal. We'll be traveling a jet lag and he'll say, come on, get up, we gotta go and eat. It's, it's time for lunch. And like, where stomachs are turned, uh, but he does that. But he also, with those three meals a day, does walk three miles every morning, which is impressive. Finally, he's a man who loves the Lord. He's always been uncompromising about that, something I've tried to model in my own life. In a day and age when loose interpretations of biblical principles rule the day, and especially with how the Sabbath is kept, for example, my dad has been firm in holding to his principles. Dad, I'm proud of you. There are several people I'd like to thank as we get started. A special thank you to my sister, Charmi, for uh, attending to the myriad details of and, and made this uh, event uh, so amazing. Yeah. I'd like to thank my mother for being the glue of our family and uh, especially not scolding my dad today. <laughs> 
I'd like to thank those of you who travel distances, like my uncle Louie and his wife, Auntie Muni, to, to be here. And thank you to John Hubenhorst and uh, uh, Munir Hussein for being here as well. We're gonna give them about 10 minutes of dedicated time. They wanted to do a special song for my dad. I want to thank Neva for her amazing work in de decorating this place. She did a wonderful job. And Dameth is our photographer. Make sure you uh, spend a, a few moments with uh, Dameth because we want to make sure we get good photos of your families before you leave today. Um, and that would be great. We want to remember this. And if you didn't have a chance actually to sign the poster board in the front when you first came in, please take a minute to write a small message as well. Um, I, I'd like to also posthumously thank my paternal grandmother, Chandra Kathama, who I never met, but gave me my dad and made sure to place him in the loving care of Pastor Zil, who was a surrogate father to him. This young man came with nothing to this country and carved out an amazing life for all of us. We're so proud of him. I even got my crying from him. <laughs> With that, I'd like to again officially welcome you to this afternoon's festivities. We'll uh, actually have a quick prayer by Noni, if you don't mind, and then we'll, we'll listen to the beautiful music. And uh, I will, as I said on the printed program, keep you guys to two minutes. We'll have a, ro a roving mic after we eat uh, to just say a few words. Uh, and uh, please, I know how Indians are with microphones, so keep it short and sweet. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll be monitoring for that. <laughs> Uncle, we wish that the years ahead are filled with love, laughter, and joy. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this amazing life that you have given Uncle, the life that has touched so many. Everyone here is just a small part of the influence that he's had. And we thank you, Lord, for his laughter, for his kindness, for his joy. We thank you for just how he brings people together how he always is wanting to spread cheer. And Father, we ask that you bless our time here together, bless our fellowship with him, and let this be a day that he will never forget. Let him be filled with love today and good times and laughter and joy. We ask that you bless the food and the time between us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Blumenhorst and Munir Hussein. Thank you very much. of my life celebrating with you. You mean a lot to me. Many of you, in one way or the other, touched my life, and I thank you for it. There are many others that are supposed to be here due to the construction of the, the policies of the church that we can only have a certain number of people. So that kind of puts away some of the friends that I would like to have this time. Them. But I thank each of you for taking your time out to come and wish me happy birthday. And uh, my children, God has blessed me with two amazing children, Preet and Shami. And they uh, are concerned about our welfare as we reach the, the age and they want to check on us to see how we are doing and so on and so forth. My daughter, Shamila, is a small in stature, but is big at heart. And she goes out of her way to help people. And she's so kind and generous with many of her friends when they're in trouble. And I appreciate that very much. I do that too. I come from a very humble home. And I have a lot of relatives who are poor. And if anybody writes a letter to me, I make sure that I help them. In fact, Premi, my wife, reminds me, did you send some money for this aunt, this uncle, and so on? When I say send this much, but she sends more than what I asked her to send. And uh, my daughter and my son, their blessing to us. I never thought that I would be blessed with such a wonderful children. Especially we had many, many thoughts going on when we got married. We waited many years to have children. 
considering the handicap of my wife, we weren't sure what kind of children we would have. But the doctor said there would not be any problems. So lo and behold, we have these two precious souls that are so much to us. And we thank all of you once again for being here and supporting us and joining each of joining us in celebration of my birthday. I thank each of you profoundly for your goodness and kindness. Many of you have shown through the years that I've been here, and I appreciate that. Thank you once again. You know, what makes the difference is the religion makes a difference. Many of us went through Narsapur High School and in Tamil Nadu, all our Christian high school. These are the ideals and values that taught us. So let us not forget this. Let help one another, support one another, cling to one another. May God bless each of us to do that is my prayer. Thank you once again for all your, your presence here this evening. <laughs> call it Narasapur School. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Somehow, I don't want, to, don't want to go into the details. Her mother heard about her uh, Christian school. They were, she is a very good uh, Christian. Her mother was not very really tall, very really short. She brought him to Narasapur School. And then, because I have uh, my wife's two minutes, Robinson Abraham's two minutes, Bimalo Abraham's two minutes, Borrowed. and uh, Michael Israel's two minutes. Wow. <laughs> they told me. I so just seen you. Don't, don't disturb me. Good to see you. I just saw you. So, <laughs> his mother brought him <laughs> to Nasako school. When she came, she had a uh, uh, water bowl. Bear, what is called the Anapakai. Anapakai, you call it Anapakai. What a bowl. <laughs> okay. She went to Zil's, Pastor Zil's house and he said, okay, we'll, we'll somehow take him to the school. But you go and see the uh, treasurer. My dad was the treasurer of the school. And he comes there. His mother gave him uh, gave, uh, the water bowl. <laughs> Okay, what a water, get a good water bowl. <laughs> okay. And um, she got the assurance that he'll be in the school. But when he came to the school, they were supposed to fill the application form. Okay. He didn't know how to fill the form, his mother didn't know how to fill the form. So, this is how I, I think it went. Because all along our childhood days, we, we never knew his birthday. We was, uh, always will say, your birthday is in BC. <laughs> BC. BC. <laughs> you know what is that? You know what is that? Okay, he went to the business office. 
the guy was there and he was filling the form. What's your name? Yeluri Ratan Rai. Date of birth. Where were you born? <coughs> born in Chetwara. So right next to his name, he put BC. Born in Chetwara. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so Rathandaj is BC. <laughs> then we started a school in uh, fourth grade. We have another friend too, Dr. Wilkinson Nainala. All three of us. There were there were uh, probably seven or eight girls and twelve or thirteen boys sitting. We didn't even have. Only three girls, man. Okay. We didn't even have uh, benches to sit on, or tables to write on. We would sit on the floor and use the floor as a, a board to write. Palaka. 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 No. Uh, oh. no. Okay. And then we had only there were eight periods and. Uh, we had only five classes, I think. And three classes we would go outside, just like the, the original people that came, that inhabited the world. They were gatherers and uh, uh, whatever it is, you know, we would go out, go after hunting fruits, vegetables. Okay, whatever it is. Huh? Yeah, no, no. We, we had the right. We thought we had the right to uh, get all those uh, uh, tamarind trees and uh, guavas and all those things we used to get. Okay, I won't take too, too long. <laughs> then, one incident I want to give you. Then I finished high school, went to college. He got married in before me, about two months before me, I, he got married. And then came away to US. He didn't work too much, too long there, maybe one, not less than a few months. <laughs> but I worked in, uh, in different schools for seven or eight years. One day, I was teaching at Nasapur School. And then I heard that he came on his first trip to USA. From, from USA. And then, there at Narsapur School, I was conducting the choir. Okay? There, there were the boys and girls singing choir and I was conducting there. All of a sudden, somebody came at the back and was taking pictures of me. Okay? I was wondering who it was. And this gentleman, my, my, my friend from high school, he came to his village in, in Chittavaram and then he came to the church. I didn't even know he was there in the church and he saw me, oh my goodness, you didn't even sing one special song in your life? How are you conducting a choir? Okay, so he started taking pictures of me. So that's how our friendship went but uh, you know there are so many other things <coughs> that I would like to see. Okay, okay. Okay, so take. take. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Recently, we're going to go back to 1953. And uh, no, but uh, Uncle, we do, on behalf of the Cycle Church, we want to say happy birthday. Obviously, we appreciate you and Auntie's presence. We know exactly where you sit. We're just making sure that you are uh, caught in the moment, understanding that you actually pay attention to what happens in the service. So, most of all, what you will hear as a rebound of every uh, afterward service, uh, Uncle will come up and give a very clear indicator of things that he really likes. And I think it was two weeks ago you came up and you mentioned something very specific. And so one, we just want to say from the pulpit, we appreciate someone who's actually listening. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. But also from our family to yours, we just really appreciate you. May the Lord's blessings be upon you in a rich way. That's thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have four siblings in the family. My brother is a heavenly. 
elder brother, and the second one is my beloved brother, late Swamaraj, and then the third in the family, I have a sister at home. As a child, myself and my sister, when he was in the Spicer College, he used to help to us and my father, because my mother passed away when I was very small. I didn't know much about her, but my brother, he sponsored our family. First, he sponsored my late brother, Sulanaraj. He came to US and also, it was in 1984, I was working in the church in Vishakapatnam as a uh, cashier accountant. He came and saw us. We were living in a small house and uh, he said, he came to US he never asked me anything. He sent the papers to sign. Then we signed and sent it to him. He filed and four of us came as an immigrant because of his uh, uh, kindness towards our family. As my children grew up, I called him before I attended the uh, American consulate in Mumbai. He said, Arre, you don't worry, I arranged everything, you just go. I told my wife, if children are not, not getting the visa, we are not going to US. But finally, he made everything. After getting the visa, the lady who was interviewed us, she gave it this much file. You know, your brother, whatever we asked, he provided immediately. We like to thank him for all the help he did to us when we are, before we arrived in US, I called him once, Anna, children are grown up, we need some accommodation. You know what he did immediately, he hired an apartment. Then we moved to him, he paid three months rent for us, and he put me some money in my pocket for uh, provision and other things. So we all thankful to him for the help he did to our family. He is a great husband. He is a good father. He is a good friend. Above all, he is a good Christian. Whenever he visits our place, Chittuvaram in India, he will definitely visit uh, my, my mother's side people, then my father, five people, and all his friends, and try to help them whatever he used to, he can do it. That's a heart he has. So, once again, wholeheartedly, I want to thank sincerely to my brother for the way he helped us. In Psalmist, David says in Psalm 23, I'm closing. Hold the microphone up. David sang a song in two thousand years ago. It's in Psalm 23. I want to dedicate this verse and the song of David to my brother. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in a green pasture. He leads me beside the quiet waters and he restores he restore my life. I'll sing one chorus and one stand. God bless you.
Hello, everybody. My name is Sylvan. I'm uh, the Ratha Raja's uh, eldest grandson. I call him my Tata. And I haven't, uh, I regret to inform you, I haven't come prepared with as beautiful a song as my Tata David Raji is saying for all of you. Um, but I have come to talk a little bit about my Tata. Um, I could go down the laundry list of talking about all of his achievements as a lifelong learner, as a librarian, as a father, as a husband, as a grandfather. I could do all those things, but to him, achievement was never the end goal. Um, and seeing here how many people he's touched, what has truly been his gift is his ability to relate to other people and build meaningful relationships with them. I can remember even as a little kid, two, three years old, whenever we'd go anywhere, my Thakka introduces himself to everybody he meets. And to this day, when he'll come pick me up from school up in Baltimore, he's introducing himself to the guards. He's making small chit chat with everybody. And his open and warm heart is what naturally gravitates so many people to him like we can see here today. I like to think that I've modeled my behavior a little bit after his in that way. He will, he will tell you a very funny story about how as a two-year-old going to Macy's, I introduced myself to some random old lady in the, in the store shopping, and I was like, and this is my grandfather, I told her when I pointed to him. My thought, I stopped myself from saying thought though because I knew she wouldn't understand, and so I said, this is my grandfather. <laughs> he uh, always will tell me that story, and I, in so many ways, I try to emulate my Tata and what an incredible man he is. Um, I try my best and it seems like we all do, but I often feel like I struggle to live up to the high standard he set for all of us. In his walk with God, in his career, and as a family man, uh, the best thing I could be in this world is my Tata. Oh, thank you, Sophan, that was great. I just want to share a quick story about Uncle when I was uh, 18 years old. I was working in downtown DC inter inter interning with this company, and we were working on a proposal for the Democratic Republic of Congo to build a communication system, and we needed maps. And this is before the internet. So back then, you had to go to a store and buy a map, but there was no place. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take the metro down to the Library of Congress. And when I get there, I saw Uncle working there, I was like stunned. And uh, he spent like half the day helping me find, you know, these ancient archives. I mean, these maps are like two or three hundred years old, like sepia paper with, you know, dragons and monsters on the side. But the fact is, you know, my company was impressed that I came back with, uh, with, with these, uh, you know, with the information that I needed. So it was kind of interesting you mentioned the master's degrees at the, the uh, library of science. So. You know, again, just let you know that was uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, I want to take two minutes. Yes. First, I want to thank uh, thank family for inviting us and uh, giving us this opportunity to celebrate with everyone here, this great occasion, uh, especially for my dear Anna. And secondly, I want to wish him many more years of happiness, peace, joy, good health to come. My first encounter with Anna was about 35 years ago, if I remember correctly in uh, one of our gatherings in the association. And ever since I somehow gravitated fondly towards him because of his intellectual and very calm, calculated, and well thought process of dealing with things. And I admire him for that. And, uh, and I hope I could be like him. Always I wished to, that my mind could behave the way 
he used to think. But I was a little bit rowdy in my way, <laughs> way of thinking. So it took a long time for me to get to that stage. And to make the story short, and also I used to think about them as uh, three musketeers of our association. Of course, the other two are in peace with God, and Anna is one of them. Leonard Anna, Adam Prasad Anna, and Anna here, Matumbaj Anna. Three musketeers. And they, I used to enjoy their comments. They passed to each other and cracked jokes sitting in the association. It was all a cherishable, uh, memorable uh, thoughts and uh, incidents of times. So I would like to thank everyone. May God bless you, Anna, and keep you in good health for a long time to come. Thank you. And then uh, for being nicely went up and <laughs> preceded, but still from us younger folk, I wanted to say a few words. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, there's a saying, it's said many different ways, but the gist of the saying is that you will forget uh, bad things that people say about you and bad things that people have done to you, but you never forget the way someone makes you feel. And uh, the essence of that is so strong, I believe. And out of that, I've gleaned that love and kindness transcends words. Love and kindness. And I think that um, through all of the interactions that I've had with uncle and uh, with auntie, uh, I just remember the way that they make me feel. And it's welcomed, and it's kindness, and it's love. And it has been such an honor to have shared that with you and that you have shared that with us. And we get that through Pritham and Charmy and the uh, kids that they've become has become your legacy that's growing. And those sentiments will never be forgotten because kindness and love transcends. Thank you, happy birthday. It's such a great pleasure this afternoon to assemble here in honor of my dear friend, Mr. Ratan Raj. What a pleasant meeting. Such glowing faces, a young generation, and then we have the older ones that are scattered here and there. And I have always thought the school that we all went together in Nasapur is about 100 years old. And in this school, through the ages, we have known pageantry of people walking through those halls and walking through those pathways in the campus. And some become standard bearers. They actually carry the flag forward. And one among them is Mr. Ratan Raj. And I consider him, in my personal opinion, he is a human being par excellence. And I have held that opinion to myself for a long period of time. I have sometimes expressed my feelings to him, but not in this manner. But it is a, an opportunity to publicly acknowledge him to that extent. And I love the young people like Tata's speech and Mr. Chandler's speech echoed some of the sentiments that I carry. I think love and kindness are everything. Mm -hmm. And how kingly it is to be kind. Thank you, Ratan Raj. 
for your own contribution to our lives, but I think you're the most educated person in this hall. Thank you for this opportunity. A couple of days ago, my wife told me to get, go and get a card for Ramanaj, 85th birthday card. And I said, he can be 80 years older to me. So I knew the age, so I got the card. I just want to mention one incident. A friend of mine and I were suspended uh, in Narsapur school. And uh, this was something happened at the end of the previous school year. And so the following year, my friend and I, we thought we'd come early along with the other students so that nobody would notice that we were suspended. <laughs> so we, I stayed with a relative of mine and my friend stayed with his relative. And while we were under suspension, we both thought we'd go to a theater and see a movie. You know, go, movie going was uh, forbidden in the school. So after the movie, we were returning on the road. And lo and behold, we saw Raknaraj coming on the, on the bicycle. And uh, you know, Raknaraj being uh, son of uh, Pastor Mr. Zill, we knew that if he sees us, that's the end of our school year. And so, what we did was, both of us, if you know Narsapur school, there's a canal right in front of the school. So what we both did was, we quickly ran to the edge of the canal, we pulled our pants down, and, and we pretended we were whatever that is, okay? <laughs> and uh, after the bicycle went away, then we both got up and, and uh, went our way. We back, went back to our relatives. So I just want to remind them that's about that. He, if he had told his pastor zero, that was the end. We don't know, they would have been dismissed and my parents would have never sent us to school again. So I want to keep our keep from that. <laughs> I'm not seeing us. <laughs> and also, I just want to say, because of Ramanaj and Prem, we came to this country. We will, we will ever be grateful to them for bringing us to this country. And thank you so much. And God bless you guys. Yeah, thank you. It was an honor to say a few words on this about this remarkable man, you know. As a youngster, I had a hobby of collecting stones and pebbles from the mountainside. And the crew was with me all the time at that time. And then when I was a teenager, of course, I learned to use guns and all that. But as a youngster, I was collecting stones. And along the way, I came across a small stone. And when I washed it and found it, it was a golden nugget. And this is, of course, none other than Mr. Ratan Raj. <laughs> He's really a remarkable man, you know. And this was uh, when I was in fourth grade. And I was 10 years old. And I didn't know how old he was at that time. And he doesn't even know. And even his son is actually confused about that. But anyway, that's fine. So, before that, a few years before that, uh, my, I found another nugget, golden nugget. That was, of course, Mr. Pearson Prakasam. We were classmates from second grade. He beat, he beat him there on that, you know. And a few years before that, I found a diamond this time. This diamond was beautiful and uh, very mischievous. And she was also our classmate from second grade. Of course, that's none other than Jennifer Raja Rao. <laughs> and those were really good old days, I can tell you that. And during those days, uh, I can tell that Mr. Ratanraj has like a bald hair and all that, I can tell you why. I'll give you some secrets. He was using castor oil for his hair cream, <laughs> coconut oil for his body lotion, you know. <laughs> And he would take 
I mean, let's, let's say not he would. We would take back maybe once a week or once in two weeks. <laughs> Change clothes maybe once a week, you know. So you really don't, I mean, these were really good old days, you know. <laughs> Many times, you know, my wife says to me, well, you know, how did you have these friends, you know, Ratan Raj and Pearson, they are such nice and good fellows, and you such a bad guy, you know, like a bastard you are. You know, like, sort of something like that. You know, say, how, can the, how can it be? I, I tried to figure that out many times. I couldn't figure that out. Finally, I came up with the answer, you know. He's a good guy, right? You all agreed that. And that guy is a good guy. I'm a bad guy. So, but I chose these good guys, right? How? I'm pretty smart, right? That means? So they chose me. That means what do they make them? I won't call them stupid, you know? But something a little different. All three of them, right? Yeah, but anyway. He's a remarkable man. Even at that time, you know, I couldn't see it at that time. But when I look back, I can see. He was very punctual, he was very polite, he was very honest, and he was very hardworking. All these good qualities, you know, is there, are there, you know. He would never look at girls, you know, until he went to college, and then he's looking at her. And he doesn't say any bad words, he doesn't know how to say bad words. I think maybe I heard him once or twice, maybe. He will say Lanti Kurdu. I don't know what I don't know if you know that or not, at least a little bit, you know. So but there is one flaw that I found in him, you know. Uh, so he's not all perfect, what you're saying, you know. There is a little bit, there is a little, little flaw in him. He is a harvester. You know what a harvester is? Huh? What is a harvester? You see, he always harvests. You know, he used to talk so great about Chittavaro. Chittavaro, I thought, is a great metropolis, you know. And he had like a subway and all these things. He used to talk like that, you know. And Mandilodu and this fellow, that fellow, he used to. You know? But he is my dearest friend for 70 years, you know. That's a long, long time. We four of us, you know, we're friends for the last 70, 73, 74 years. And it's a remarkable feat, and he's a remarkable man, I can tell you that. And so I know better than most of you, you know. But one thing I know that he's a very God-fearing man. And that is what attracted me a lot to him. You know. He's a God-fearing man. Happy birthday, God bless you, you know. Thank you. Rooms from Sligo and alternate Wednesday. But I also asked Anna because I volunteer with the nonprofit and I asked him if he wanted to come and help me. And he reminded me so much of how my dad would talk to me because he said, Mama, you were going on 495 so fast. You were just a little girl I remember in Nassau and that would be something my dad would have said to me. And I was like, Anna, do you know how old I am? I'm like 60 now. And he said, oh, he always talks to me like that. He's so loving and kind. And the other thing is, we moved into their neighborhood, and I used to see him going for a walk. He is all business. When he goes for a walk, he's like, he's going so fast. I can't even keep up with him. He, just a few weeks ago, I mean, he's 80. He walks faster than me. He takes care of his health. And he has love and kindness going through his veins. Happy birthday. All right, two minutes plus two, because he pushed me down the aisle. Uh, OK, thank you very much, Pritam, for recognizing me. I want to have the first uh, outset. Wish Mr. Ratan Raj, my friend, a very happy 80th birthday. I and my wife and my son Praveen and all our family, we are so delighted to celebrate with you and your family, Praveen, uh, Pritam, and uh, Shirley, and your grandchildren. God bless you a lot. Now, uh, I'm, I got 
probably the perfect spot to say something because everybody more important than me have already come up and uh, spoke. So uh, one of them, uh, the first thing Pritham said was, Ratan Raj uh, is an honest person. And Paulson came up with a story. And the other person in that story was me. <laughs> uh, that was my story. I was uh, actually hesitating whether I should tell the story or not. But anyway, he told. So a couple of others too. Uh, everything was true. And Wilkinson said uh, he, collect, he used to collect pebbles. And the uh, crew was always there. The crew was me, Krupawar. <laughs> In fact, I collected the pebbles for him. So anyways, now I came to Narsapur school. I first met Ratan Raj two years after Pearson and uh, uh, Dr. Wilkinson met, met him. That means I was two years their junior. So when I came, uh, we quickly became friends. And myself, Paulson, there's another guy by name, G.S. Edward, Edward Gunter Solomon. So David Lutz, few of us were very close friends. So we became, we always moved as a, a group wherever we went. And Ratanaj was part of that. But his honesty is good, but that made me and some of us, some others, including Dr. Narsaya, a little bit worried and scared. Because if there was a plan to strike and we have a meeting, we have to avoid it. Because he was son of the principal Zil. So should we invite? So it, it was always a scary business. And we got caught up in that scary business, Paulson and myself. And so luckily, he didn't see us. Uh, because of his honesty, he would have reported to Pastor Zil uh, that we went to movie. We all went to movie on the pretext of what? Distributing Sabbath tracts. The two tracts. We two were there. All of us did that. And so that is the background. Lo and behold, Ratan Raj was a great student, and I didn't know how great he was until uh, from 1956 to his 1962. And then, Fate had it that Ratanraj had some financial problems and other problems. Because of that, he fell behind Wilkinson and Pearson and became my schoolmate in 10th standard. So when we went to matriculation examination, and lo and behold, he scored the topmost score in the matriculation examination. So of course, my brother probably came quite close uh, James, younger to me, but Ratan Raj was there. Now, fast forward, we went to Spicer in 1962, both of us with many others. Uh, then uh, we graduated in 1967. And I remember the dates, but I don't need to tell the dates. It was a date, March 27, we graduated, 28 was his wedding. And unfortunately, his closest friends, Ratan Raj, and Pearson probably were not in college. We were there, so the next day I stayed. We attended their wedding, Premi, and Ratanath got married one day after uh, our graduation, Ratanath's graduation. So we are happy to celebrate with you all of those. And our sojourn from Narsapur to Spicer College to US uh, has been so fruitful because we have good friends and we cherish your friendship, Mr. Ratan Raj, and pray me, you have been a blessing to us in our lives, and you have blessing, been a blessing to the community. God bless you, God continue to give you abundant blessings, good, and good health, and happiness, joy, and longevity. Uh, Much has been spoken about Mr. Ratan Raj. I don't have to say anything much except a minute or two. The reason behind is that when I went to my high school for the sixth grade, he was graduating this year. Then after I finished my high school, I went to college, he was graduating that year. But I didn't have much acquaintance. But when I came here, I have got a lot of acquaintance with him. All that it was, 
He always smiles, comes and give a big hug. And I always tell him, you look handsome. <laughs> Even now this morning, when I, this afternoon when I came, he came running and he gave me a hug. I said, Anna, you look very handsome. Then he said, nobody told me at this part. <laughs> Only you are telling me all this. <laughs> but anyway, he's a good gentleman, very helpful, very kind, very honest, and also very, very sober and kind. I always appreciate him. I don't call him as a friend, but I call him as a brother because he's quite older to me, and I never grew up with him. But his brother, younger brother than myself, we were classmates, but his late uh, Suvanaraj, he passed away. So I'm very delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting us, and you are the most blessed person. We wish you all God's blessings and many more happy returns. Thank you. For my dad. But just wanted to share just little snippets of, of our relationship as his, as his youngest daughter, as his baby. Um, I'm so lucky that I've been able to have such, um, such an amazing dad. And, and some of my most favorite memories in my life is actually the time that I got to spend alone with my dad. Um, we just doing simple things. I don't know if, if you all remember the Heckinger's hardware store in Langley Park. I used to go with him, I think probably every Sunday, I'd tag along to Heckinger's, and he would always buy me Carvel ice cream afterwards. Um, I remember our drives, he'd take me to the babysitter, and um, in those days they didn't have car safety, so I would sit on the console next to him while he played the, played the radio, and he'd just let me sing at the top of my lungs whatever pop song was going on um, in the early 80s. Um, those of you who remember the house that we grew up in, in Adelphi, it was across from the George Washington Cemetery. Uh, we used to take long walks um, in, the, in, the, in that cemetery, just him and I, and especially early on Saturday morning before your story hour or church, we'd go, and we wouldn't say a whole lot. Um, he'd tell me some stories of, of life in the village and just spend that time together. Um, for more than 20 years, my dad and I actually went to Redskins games, him and I. Um, we had season tickets, and for those of you who, who are, know the team in Washington, uh, they, we've had far more losses than wins. <laughs> but, but I always felt like a winner because I got to spend the whole day with my dad, just him and I. Um, so dad, when I, when I look back just on my life, and I think a daughter, a woman, Everybody, I think, as women, we always struggle to find what our place is in this world. And knowing that I'm just loved so profoundly by you, I've always felt so secure um, in my place in this world because I'm so loved by you. And you've given me a life, lifetime of just amazing memories. Thank you for being such a wonderful dad. Okay, well thank you all for coming again and spending your time, your Sunday afternoon with us.